And now, coming at you from someplace in Wisconsin, it's time for Buddy Club Gardening, starring Rachel. Yeah, Rachel. Okay. We're gonna make dinner today. Alright, so, welcome to Brickle Garden, and today we, it is a special day, um, it's not a holiday, it's Day Dark Cooking Day! Day Dark Cooking Day! And today we're making ham soup! Ham soup! Alright, so, first thing I did when you were washing your hands was I got some water going here. I took, uh, I don't know, some water and a big can, a large can of, uh, chicken broth. Chucked them into this here pot and put it on high because it has to come to a boil so I can throw barley in there. I have no idea. Oh wait. Hold on. We're using a three ca pound can of chicken broth. Three pounds. Three pounds. Three pounds. Three pounds. So we're using some, uh, yeah, we're making ham soup. We're going to use some barley. Barley. Barley, barley. barley. It's uh, medium barley. This takes about some time. Uh, what time does it take? 45 minutes. 45 minutes. About 45 minutes to cook. So we're going to measure off some barley. Rachel, will you watch me measure off some barley into the container? Yes. All right, hold the camera because I just dropped it. We're going to measure off measure time. some barley. Measure it. That's not exactly measuring. No. Because we don't measure. That's how we're measuring. We're bad boys. Cooking, we don't really have to. I mean... Baking, you do. Baking, you do. That's a formula. Cooking, baking you don't is, have to. Right, baking is strict. So now we're going to stir it in there real well. I used on about half a box, three quarters of a box, actually. Um, we really didn't, you know, measure it, obviously. There's measurements on the boxes, but we did whatever we wanted to. So now we're going to get some carrots and some celery. And some, what else? We couldn't get celery out of the garden because it's way too early, we don't have any. But we are gonna show you a cool trick with garden with uh, celery later on. We're gonna get some carrots, which again, I don't have any left over from the garden so I had to buy some. This is what you get out of the store. The garden stuff is way better. Out of the grocery store, so you know. It is what it is. And then normally, hey, normally we don't show labels on products that we buy, but where we are in southeast Wisconsin, this place is pretty close to us and excellent, Can excellent, excellent pro. Yep. Usingers. Usingers. Always awesome. good stuff. Yeah. So, let's stop it for a minute. Adult supervision. It's going to be required if you're using a knife. So, go get big, us. Big. Big Go get mom room. so she can keep an eye on us. Except we've 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 mom's done that gone. Guy. Okay, so we're just gonna you know you could really what we ultimately better is um, use a ham with a bone in it. But we're just kind of doing this quick and why would you want the bone? A bone? That's a good question. But oh, a yeah, bone will help you with this to to make a nice ham yeah. stew or something like that. What that'll do is uh, the bone will add a lot of flavor for you. So you'd be good to go with that. I'm just cutting this up into larger pieces like this. This is going to be too big. Too so big. So we'll kind of cut like that and like that. But that's good. And these are about the size chunks that I'm going to want for my ham soup. So you can turn that off. Okay, so now we have to stir the barley. Which you want to do every 10 minutes? Yeah, every 10 minutes. And once it comes to a boil like this, you want to right, turn, turn off the heat. Turn it down to low, Rachel. Turn it all the way down to low. Just like right there. Yep. And you want to stir it again? Good to go. Do you want to open up a window and door? Every 10 minutes. No, you don't have to. It's fine. Smoke alarms? No, nope, that's just steam, not smoke. All right. Cutting may take a while. Cutting may take a little bit. You know what, though? Um, you guys are watching this video. We're, in, we're just having fun. This is a good way to cook. I'm trying to teach my daughter how to cook and, and, and do some really cool skills here. And, and one of the ways that I really like to do it is to have fun with it. It's, you know, you don't have to be so serious. Obviously, if you're using one of these, you want to be real careful. Otherwise, it's just fun time. 
So the barley, as we said earlier, takes about 45 minutes. So this ham is already pre-cooked. The vegetables are going to soften up fast. I don't need to leave them in for the whole 45 minutes. We're going to have them cook probably about 20, 25 minutes. So once the barley goes down, that is when we're going to start cooking all of our stuff. We'll cut everything up. We'll dice it. We'll slice it. We'll all slice dice. dice it. Fruit yeah. Ninja. Okay. Because that way your sleeves or whatever doesn't end up in the fire. Okay. So here is a tip that we have. You want to... Yeah. You want to make sure that you're either wearing an apron, like one of these awesome aprons, either an apron or a, like a tight-fitting shirt when tuck you're opening. Tuck your shirt into your pants, tuck, yeah, whatever. Tuck your shirt in because when you're working with a flame arson, very low, you can't see it. But um, you don't want to catch your shirt on fire because that would be bad. <laughs> Accidentally lean into the fire. All right. Turn yeah. It off. Turn the heat up to medium. Rinse off the celery. Our store bought, which I hate to see. That. This is store bought. Stop saying celery. it. Um, right here. This is actually celery hearts that we, my wife, bought. Um, so you, obviously, you know, when they cut this stuff, we want to take that chunky junk off. And just so you know, the heart is put, the right part. Yes, I will put that into. Yeah. Eat that. This okay. is where I cut off. No that good. is icky. So yeah, don't eat that. Put it in the compost pile because it's all browned off. We can give some of the gerbils. Compost. Alright. Gerbil. Cutting up and then I'll have you. You want to cut some? Have it. Okay. Alright. Okay. So now we take knife and we cut. If you're the same person for Saxon. He's celery. He's cut. Right there. Stop. Don't cut anymore. What we're going to do with this, actually, is we're going to make another celery grow out of it. <gasps> It'll be magic. I'll show you that in just a minute. Gather it up. This, look at this. Put, put it in a bowl. Put it into a dish. This, I mean, we could take the very middle out. This is just the leaf. This is the very heart of the heart. This is really tender, good stuff. So I'm just going to chuck it all into the pot. We'll go over here. Run! No, now don't be run careful so you don't spill and splash. There's celery. Let's do carrots. I just told you we were going to make celery grow from celery. I'm hoping this works because usually you want to use something kind of like organic. What you'll find when you buy store-bought vegetables, grocery store-bought vegetables, is they're often garlic being very prevalent. But um, they're kind of sprayed and they're, they're grown so that they really have longevity on shelves and that doesn't necessarily bode so well for trying to get it to regenerate or sprout because they're sprayed for that so they don't re-sprout on the shelves. I'm just going to cut a tiny little axe into it. I don't even know that that's necessary. But this is just the it looks like a rose of inside. my celery. Then we're going to take, oh, you know what I can use this. Small dish. Fill it up with a little bit of water. <laughs> and with our um, purified water that this guy put in for us. There. It's so now we're going to set it on the water, we're going to put it by windowsill. And then we're going to wait right here around the middle in a couple days is going to sprout. And we'll let that come up and once you see a couple little leaves on there, take it out to the garden, bury it to the top of here so that just that sprout's coming out and you'll get a whole new stalk of celery. Oh yeah. We have carrots. You're not filming, are you? No. All right. So we take the bag. Cut off the end. Why are we cutting off the end, you ask? Just because I want to make kind of like a, I don't know, a peel catcher upper thingy out of it. I'm just going to go like that. Very lovely terms. It's <laughs> highly technical. <laughs> so now I've got this slick willy kind of thing here. And I've already rinsed off all of my. I know the kitchen better than you does. And we're going to peel them. Would you like to help me peel, Miss Rachel? Yes, Buddy but Club it's, it's sharp. Stop it. Go ahead and stop the video. You know why you like peeling carrots so much, Rachel? It's got a lot of appeal. <laughs> Go ahead. Very. 
So you guys only have to put up with my funniness once in a while watching our videos. Rachel every day has to listen to me. Go! And you have to be careful when you're peeling the other side because this side is somewhat slippery. That's a good idea. That's a good point. So that's like you might want to have a napkin around it. So that is an even better way. idea. All right, so let's look at doing that for the next one. We'll I'm see. A napkin. Why don't you peel those, and we're gonna peel them and then put them into a dish, and then we're going to cut them a little bit. Like the same size as the celery. Sure, absolutely. Let's go look at our dish of stuff, bowl of stuff. Yeah. Celery in there. Chunks of ham. There's our barley in there. Why on earth are you over here instead of over there peeling? I finished peeling the carrots. I don't believe so. Let's go I'm look. Sorry. What? Carrots are over here. Not peeled. Not peeled. Not peeled. Not peeled. This one's peeled that I did earlier. Everybody saw me do it on video. And there's Rachel's, which is all right. That's done. You've <laughs> done one. Go. All right, guys. Uh, so little Miss here just told me that she has problems holding this knife. So um, safety is important, and we want Rachel to be comfortable in the kitchen and not scared. So I switched the knife for her. Whoop! That's a little large, kiddo. Here, let's see if I can help you a little bit. I'm gonna okay. figure out how to hold this. Okay. doing a good job. Watch your fingers now. Remember, remember what I told you about your fingers that one time? There you go. Hold your fingers under. Perfect. There you go. Good job. Yeah, you don't want to hold the knife. Here, hold this. I'm going to show folks just so we know. This is actually something we learned on a TV show. I'm not going to say the name of the show. It, remind, it rhymes with mud meats. Huh? We can't say the name of the show though, because then we get in trouble on YouTube. Um, what we want to do is you have to curl your fingers in just so you don't trap your hand off. That's exactly correct, so you don't cut your fingers off, right? So if we cut with our fingers just like this, I've got a very good chance of slicing my finger wide open and making yet another trip and making yet another trip to the emergency room. <laughs> Um, Wait, you already cut yourself doing this? Dude, I've been to the emergency room more times than I think you are years old. Alright, and that's not just for kitchen accidents either. Oh. Okay, so what we really want to do is, instead of cutting like that, we want to... Tuck, tuck curl your fingers, fingers under. under like this. Yes. Curl them. Curl them under, so that's like that. If you have long nails, then you probably shouldn't do that. Pow. Just like that. Okay? Cat. We're gonna cut this because not everybody has to see us cut the rest of it. Bye! Okay, so we put the carrots into a bowl and now we carefully put them into a depot without splashing everywhere. Put your hand there if you need to. We're gonna wait, not put all of them in just yet. Mix it up and see how we're looking. Yeah, you probably should have done that with the celery and stuff too, but. No, dude, I got it. No. That's looking pretty darn good. Let's do the rest. It looks like little eyeballs. Okay. All right, go ahead. So we have that much more? A little bit more ham we had. We want to adjust the taste a little bit, so we decided to add all the rest of it. And we've already put in a little bit of pepper. We're not going to put in any salt because, quite frankly, we don't need it. The chicken broth will have salt in it already. So. We're looking pretty good. We're gonna wait a few minutes and then we'll taste it. You can go ahead and add whatever spices or herbs you'd want to right now. Like basil. Like basil. Barley. Barley is already in there. Thyme. Something. Something. <laughs> uh, we're looking pretty good. So, we'll wait and talk to you in a bit, right? Bye. Right, bye. Mrs. Buddy Club, what is it like having two goofballs around? Uh, they're, they're, not, they're not goofballs at all. They're very, very nice, and I'm glad. Just to, not being honest. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad to be part of their family. Just not being honest. <laughs> that is all. Anything else? That's all. <laughs>
Very nice. Two. All right. Good. Starting. Yeah, I'm on. Start. Good. I oh, okay. We're just having fun, folks. Like I said earlier, I don't have any um, onion, so what I'm just going to do is use onion flakes. Couldn't you use like a box point? Like a seasoning, mixed blend seasoning? Yeah. I could, but I don't want to go real crazy with all kinds of flavor. So, I mean, cause this needed something. It tasted kind of bland. Um, and I so know you earlier... Tasted it? Tasted it. You have to taste it, man. That's a good part. And I know earlier I said I wasn't going to add salt. Sure. I know earlier I said I wasn't going to add salt, but I'm going to. Because what the salt is going to do is it's going to help it to kind of... Uh, soften this stuff in here and break everything down and so those flavors all kind of macerate they all kind of everything gets all Definition mixed up macerate? In there. macerate look it macerate? up then you tell me mix get mushy I That's don't it. know everything I'm good. will kind of blend itself they all become one a hard carnal in perfect harmony a cornucopia of goodness stop it add some sage some Stuff, onion things, flakes. all kinds of junk. There's parsley in there. Not we just sage, added a little parsley. bit. No sage. No parsley. Sage. We added a little bit of parsley. parsley. Got to be careful with the parsley though, because there is chicken broth in there. I don't want that thing tasting like a gigantic chicken soup. <laughs> Fat gigantic chicken. It's so funny. You're grounded. What? All right. Let's see what the boss says. Boss. Here comes the boss. Boss. I'm not the boss. Yeah. Right. Taste it. Let us know what you think. It doesn't need to be stirred anymore. Yeah, no. Mamo has to stirred a little bit more. Looks like we could probably use a little bit more liquid. In different circumstances, we would have um, did half of a ham and then had a ham bone. Yeah, we were talking about that earlier. Yes, and, but this is our quick make do with what we um, have available. So in a pinch, we're just using a, nice, a chunk of good, reputable ham. So let me see what we have here. Photo bomb. All right, so soup is ready. And I chose for mine, just I'm trying to get, you know, a little bit more vegetables and greens. So I took some uh, leaves of spinach, and which was coming out of the garden now, actually. Um, and I cut it real thin into a little chiffonade and threw that on there. How is yours, Rachel? It's the normal. Um, Rachel's not going to add anything really to it. And bread and butter. Bread and butter. She's going to have a little bread and butter. Okay. And. Yeah, my braces off. Rachel's braces are off. <laughs> you guys have seen us before. Rachel's braces are goners. And Mrs. Buddy Club has elected to use uh, tomatoes on hers. Thanks for watching. Hope you had a good time. We had fun. Say bye. Bye. Say bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.